Hello and welcome to SQL Server 2012 test lab project which we will be creating on Windows Server 8 Hyper-V beta version which is released a couple of days ago. In this video I will be talking about the basic hardware which you'll need to prepare this test lab and the basic software plus what all different configuration will need. This is me, all the details you can see to contact me. Uh, that's my blog where you can see all the articles and videos posted and if you have any comments please post it here, any suggestions post it here. I usually check in a day or two and respond as soon as possible. In case you're not aware of the hardware part. I have covered that in my previous article. So let's go to that article and have a look. So here on sqlfeatures.com you can visit low power SQL Server test lab on Windows Server 8 Hyper-V or any XE5. This is the setup I recently built which supports ESXFI as well as Windows 8 Hyper-V and these are the key consideration and features I chose when I was building that setup. My main consideration was that the power consum consumption should be as low as possible. A 20 watt power consumption was I was targeting and that's exactly what I achieved. Now this particular configuration in an ideal way I would like to run a Windows 7 HTPC which can play Blu-ray, Windows Media Center, Netflix with an ease and then I should be able to boot through a VHD which is a Windows Server 8 Hyper-V VHD and at the same time I should have a bootable ESXi Hypervisor USB stick which has the hypervisor configured. If you happen to test how ESXFI supports a particular configuration versus a Windows Server 8 Hyper-V, you can quickly switch and boot into an accessory mode and with the same hardware you'll be able to achieve a different kind of a setup, different kind of a test labs for you. Now to build this hardware, I was trying to go with the minimum price range as well as the minimum power consumption. Here is the case I have chosen which is a, which has a 65 watt of adapter, a very small case and then 8 gig of RAM which is a must uh, whatever the test lab you want to build. ESXi Phi even without having any VM needs 2.6 gig RAM for its own purposes. So if you are building a 4 gig of test lab in that case it will not be sufficient after first VM it will start cringing. When you plan for this hardware go with 8 gig of RAM and then I bought a very cheap $59 motherboard which doesn't have any latest and greatest features like USB 3 and SATA 6 but it does support the configuration and the test lab what we are building here. And then for CPU we are going with a very low power 35 watt CPU Core i32120T model which is available for 128. Here are the links you can click and most of them goes to Amazon where you can buy. It. This configuration can run 3 to 4 VMs at the same time not at a full load. Don't expect it to do too much cause we are running a we are running a processor which is little which is the latest processor but which has only two cores so it can run three four VMs at any point of time which are not high performing otherwise you'll see some impact. So this is how I usually use this particular setup and as I discussed that in the next article we'll talk about configuring a Windows Server 8. Hyper-V beta running from a VHDX. So VHDX is a new format for Windows 8 Hyper-V and we will on that VHDX then will boot from it 
and configure the Hyper-V and then prepare the test lab to test out the features of SQL Server 2012. In this video, we'll configure Windows Server 8 Hyper-V server running on a VHDX file. So let me show you first what do I mean by VHDX file. So here is one of the Windows 8 server running on a VHDX file called Windows 8 SRV VHDX. Only it's the C drive, the file which you are seeing, the C drive. It's basically coming, getting generated from this file. This is the file I am booting from, which actually is showing up as a C drive onto this machine. So basic idea is that you boot on to a system and then you create a VHD file. You prepare the all installation while staying in your own system, which could be a Windows 7 server or Windows Server 8 or Windows 2008 server or R2. All these servers supports you to create a VHD file. So in this set, setup as you can see I have multiple systems running so as you can see I'm booting with w8 srv vhdx at this point now suppose I want to add another how I I came to this screen and I selected Microsoft VHD give it a name of what the name we were seeing here and then clicked on the document and pointed to this particular VHDX file. Since VHDX is new format, EasyBCD as a default is not able to see it, so but you just select and say open and that's about it. A new entry will be created here and then you can make it as a default bootable at uh, the same and you can set the time. What we'll do is we'll first destroy this environment but before I destroy this environment let me show you what do I have on this environment and what we will be building to local server. I have Hyper-V configured here and I can go to Hyper-V manager. I have one Windows 8 DC and storage machine. I have two nodes for Windows 8 server which has SQL Server 2012 installed on each of them as a standalone. And once that is done, I can configure a failover cluster on these two nodes and then use 2012 always on availability group concepts and virtual name to basically do the failover and achieving the high availability as well as disaster recovery. So now we will go ahead and destroy this environment and we'll come back here and recreate this environment from scratch. So for this video I will cover creating this particular Hyper-V Manager Windows 8 Server VHDX bootable VHD file. Let's go ahead turn off. I just deleted the images. Now I can go ahead and go to the send directory. All the files here are basically this is the folder I was using to create these two images so I'll go ahead and delete them other than that my server is this here so I'll go ahead and delete that as well Now final idea is to delete this VHDX file so that we can boot up, we can create a new VHDX file and boot with that and prepare the new environment. Alright, so we are going to boot with the default host now. When we reboot it again, it will automatically boot with this entry. 
Now Windows 8 doing a shutdown is a little bit critical as you can see. First I create clicked here or I can just go ahead and stay a bit here and then I'll sort of get the settings window. I can choose power and I can just say restart. Once the machine is rebooted, I'll get back. Server has been rebooted. So as you can see, we have booted to the original machine, not the VHD anymore. So let's go and have a look and delete the VHD. So now you don't see multiple drives, all you see in C and E, which is like the two configuration, two partitions I created. I'll go ahead and delete W8 base VHD. There you go. I have the space VHD, which we will create it anyway. So I will go ahead and delete this as well. So with this we have a clear configuration. All we have is a machine which is booting into the hardware which I explained before. You can take another hardware but make sure that it is compatible with Windows 8, Server 8 or ESXi wherever you want to use. Uh, this particular combination is working pretty fine as default it figure out all the native drivers that's what i wanted and pretty low on power consumption so i can run it 24 7 couple of vms and so let's go ahead and start configuring the vhdx file which we can boot it from so the first step to do is to start the server manager. That's the new interface of Windows 8. I'll go to Tools, click on Computer Management. Disk Management. Go to the Action and I'll click on create VHD. So we'll create a VHD file on D drive. I'll give it a name. W8, it's a Windows 8 server convention name. I'll put SRV VHDX. So this is where we will create a file and we'll boot from here. And I'm creating a file size in GB for 25 GB EHD file. And I'm creating a fixed size. So what this create VHD will do is it will create a new disk visible right here once it's completed. Right now, as you can see here, creating virtual disk and it's almost 2% completed, so it will take some time. I'll be back when the disk is completed and then we'll proceed with the next step. Now disk one, as you can see, 25 gig is created. The first step is to initializing the disk. Press OK. Once disk is initialized, create a new simple volume. I'll choose the drive X. So now X drive is available. If you close this, you'll see we have X drive here. Now let's go ahead and configure this particular drive to have Windows 8 bootable installation. So I'll go to the location where I have my ISO for Windows 8. 
So here is the ISO I have. In case uh, you have not installed 7-zip, go ahead and install 7-zip. This allows you to open the archive. And source folder is what you need to extract it. Say copy to. So this example, go to the computer and put it on C drive. Say OK. So this will copy all the file and the sources into this folder. Now when this copy is going on, we'll go ahead and start another process. So on the article, you will find this download install Windows image PowerShell script will need that and since you are running it for the first time for now let's download the file so here is the file we want to download click on agree choose save as location to C drive sources folder Um, so 7j has extracted that particular folder. So now start will start PowerShell as administrator and then set execution policy to unrestricted. First time when you are starting PowerShell there is no such option comes at administrator so what we'll do is go to the corner and click to start menu now when you're on Windows PowerShell or you do a right click here and you see an option of run as administrator now we paste the statement execute it click yes there you go. The, this is the initial PowerShell configuration. If you do, it will allow you to run the next tab. Let's go and catch the next tab. So we'll do CDC sources and then we'll run this command which will make the X drive, which is our VHD file, basically pointing to the Windows folder. All right, so I'll run. So what we are doing here, so let's see how this command is working. So it's a install Windows image.ps1 file. It's a PowerShell file. We just downloaded right here. And we are ca calling it to install Windows image. We are asking to apply index number four on our destination X drive. Now what is image number four? To see that we can just comment out the statement and let's run it. What this process asks you is that click R here. So now it's telling you that in the install.vim these are the four images are there you, and these are the index number. Whatever the index number you will choose based on that, that particular image installation will go to the X drive and X drive is coming from that VHD file which we created. So I'll go ahead and execute this statement as I'm choosing Windows Server 8 Beta Data Center server with a GUI to be on the X drive. Click R again. So as the message says this may take up to 15 minutes this process is complete. So we'll look into the next process to boot with the VHD drive. It took almost six minutes to build the image. Now the basic image creation process is completed. What we will do is we'll set up to boot from this VHD file. 
before we do that we'll have to detach the VHD file selected computer manager disk management right click on this file and say detach VHD and here is the file it will detach it I'll just copy the file path so we can use it say ok that's the basic process so now we have a VHD file under SanDisk and this VHD file has the installation of Windows Server 8 what we are looking to do is we'll install the software called EasyBCD on the web page you can find link to download it it's a free version for the testing purposes now before you make any changes to the boot loader you want to do a backup of it so click on the folder select the send drive and say and click on backup this will save you in case you made some changes and not able to recover it uh, EasyBCD is not very good in maintaining the configuration and remembering some time as uh, so right now we are booting with Windows Server 8 Beta what we need to do is to add a new entry for the VHD file so disk image Microsoft VHD will give the same name what we want will give the name W8SRV VHDX path I will paste it and I'll go ahead and say add entry see the message here is added to boot menu successfully we'll click on edit boot menu I'll click on yes the change is saved now system will boot from this server and it will boot after let's make it nine seconds I click save and now I'll go ahead and click on restart computer after the restart now system will boot with the VHD file and you'll have a normal Windows 8 server configuration which keep clicking on the next and the choose the default options and you'll be in booting into Windows Server 8 in the next video I will tell you how to configure Windows Server 8 Hyper-V settings as well as how to create a base Windows Server 8 image which you can use it to build multiple VMs thank you very much for watching this video all the necessary links you can download from sqlfeatures.com I look forward to hear your comments suggestions and what kind of future sessions you would like to see you can connect me and follow me on Twitter as well as Facebook this video will be available on my YouTube channel SQL features you can subscribe me there you can subscribe me on my blog to get up notified about the new videos coming into the series thanks again for attending this session look forward to see your comments on my blog sqlfeatures.com I usually check in every couple of days and respond as soon as possible